This is the main power board from my failed Curtis 1231C pulse width modulation DC motor controller. I'm going to be replacing the main power switching components, the MOSFETs, freewheeling diodes, and capacitors on this board, which means I need to desolder all of the existing components. To get to them, I needed to unscrew the two bus bars from the bottom of the circuit board. One makes a direct connection to the bottom of the board, and this one is insulated from the bottom by a solder mask and a piece of cardboard and electrically conducted to the top via the screws. To remove the diodes, I would heat the leg from the top and suck the solder from the bottom. Once I got one leg free, I would use a screwdriver through the mounting hole to provide a bit of downward force and a handle, then desolder the other leg. Sometimes, if a leg didn't completely disconnect from the PCB when I sucked the solder, I would heat it again and push the top away from the PCB with a screwdriver until it cooled. Removing the MOSFETs was basically the same procedure. You may notice I'm only showing you the videos of my technique as I remove my last component. You can learn from my experience without experiencing the first 17 tries. This MOSFET took me a minute to remove and everything went perfectly. Many of the earlier ones took several minutes and multiple tries. At this point, I only have the power capacitors left. They are mounted flush, so you only have access from the bottom of the circuit board. Also, one of their leads is connected directly to the ground plane, which conducts heat away quickly. That is why I switched to a much bigger 100 watt iron normally used for stained glass work. To remove the capacitors one by one, you need to separate them by removing the glue used to stabilize and protect them from vibrations. I found it easiest to use the large iron to heat both leads at the same time and just pull them out, leaving the solder to clean up later. As counterintuitive as it sounds, sometimes I actually had to add a little bit of solder to a lead to get good thermal conductivity. Once I got all of the large components off the board, the only thing left to do was to suck solder out of all of the holes. So for every hole that wasn't already clean, I had to hit it with an iron and the solder sucker, sometimes more than once. There are a lot of holes on this circuit board.